स्टार्ट कमिंग टू द फैक्ट ऑफ द प्रेजेंट केस इट कैन नॉट बी सेट दैट द डिफेंस टेकन बाय द डिफेंडेंट इज टोटली शैम देयर आर सर्टेन सर्कमस्टांसेस विच मे प्राइमा फेसी रेज सम डाउट अबाउट द क्रेडिबिलिटी ऑफ प्लेंटिव वर्जन एंड लैंड सम क्रेडेंस टू द डिफेंस टेकन बाय द डिफेंडेंट दैट द चेक्स इन क्वेश्चन वर विदाउट कंसिडरेशन ऑल दो एज पर द प्लेंटिव फोर चेक्स वर प्रेजेंटेड टू द बैंकर एंड ईच टाइम दे वर डिसऑनर्ड नॉट अ सिंगल लेटर वॉज रिटर्न बाय द प्लेंटिव to the defendant about the return of these checks as unpaid further learned counsel for the plaintiff made candid admission to the effect that no notice was served on the defendant before filing the present suit while plaintiff would not write a single letter or serve notice upon the defendant for payment of the alleged outstanding amount before filing the suit is baffling to the mind now let us examine this aspect further in the context of the submissions made by the defendant it is not explained by the plaintiff as to on what account these payments were received thus the defendant has raised good defense and a tribal issue indicating that he has fair and bona fide defense moreover this court in the case of suri and suri private limited held that when the suit is filed on the basis of several dishonored checks not presented at all for encashment relief claimed would be outside the scope of order 37 of cpc and would not be maintainable the plaint will have to be dealt with in ordinary way no doubt there may be some justification in the stand taken by the plaintiff but for filing the suit order 37 of the code of civil procedure it was still necessary for the plaintiff to present the remaining checks to the bank admittedly 7 out of 11 checks given by the defendant were not presented for payment therefore the suit under order 37 would not be maintainable it is settled rule of law that wherever the defense put forth by the applicant defendant is bona fide and raises tribal issues the applicant defended would be entitled to leave to defend this rule vests pervasive judicial discretion in the court of grant refuse or grant conditional leave to defend the suit by the defendant this discretion of course has to be exercised in accordance with settled principles of law there is dual purpose sought to be served under the specific provisions of order 37 of the code one is to provide expeditious disposal of the claim by adopting recourse to summary procedure while the other is to provide a safeguard to the interest of the plaintiff in other words if the court is satisfied with the claim of the plaintiff and the fact that the defendant has only sham on moonshine defense the court may refuse to grant leave to defend and pass the decree forthwith but in other cases the court may grant leave with or without condition the court strikes a balance between the case of the plaintiff and the defense raised by the defendant the prepositions laid down by the supreme court in its various decisions may be 
summed up as follow if the defendant satisfies the court that he has a good defense to the claim on merits or raises a tribal issue the defendant is entitled to an unconditional leave and if the defendant discloses such facts as may be deemed sufficient to entitle him to defend the court may impose conditions as to time of trial or mode of trial on the other hand if the defendant has no defense or a sham or illusory defense the defendant is not entitled to leave to defend in the case of international computers consultants versus home computers services limited a division bench took the view that once tribal issues are raised with bona fide and firm defense leave should be granted but if the defense is frivolous or vexatious leave should be refused where there is reasonable doubt and the court feels it just reasonable the court may impose such condition while granting the leave as it may deem fit and proper applying the said principle to the present case i have no hesitation in affirming the view taken by the learn trial court that the defendant may have raised tribal issue but it lacks bona fide judicial discretion to be exercised by the court has to create a balance so that none of the parties to the suit suffer avoidable prejudice the learned trial court had only granted conditional leave to the defendant applicant in which i see no error of jurisdiction above principle of law are well enunciated and accepted principle learn counsel appearing for the plaintiff applicant contends that this court has jurisdiction and complete case of the applicant is a sham defense thus leave prayed for should be rejected let us examine the facts of the present case the plaintiff has filed on record copies of three checks he has also filed on record a copy of the notice dated 31st march 1994 allegedly sent to the defendants for payment of rupees 30 lakhs it is strange that the stand taken by the plaintiff in the notice is at complete variance to the claims made in the plaint the loan transactions referred to in the plaint did not find a mention in the notice in the plaint the claim is based upon five checks while the notice only refers to three checks the inconsistencies in the stand taken by the plaintiff prima facie creates a dent in the case of the plaintiff and lends credibility to the stand taken up by the defendants why would an income tax consultant not even get a receipt acknowledging the payment of such amount particularly when they are being made in cash there is no justification stated on record as to why the plaintiff has not filed on record the two checks which were not even presented to the bank for encashment the averments made by the plaintiff are not founded on any cogent and reliable evidence non production of two checks on record would by itself provide a defense to the defendant that the suit is not covered under order 37 of the cpc this itself 
is a matter of serious legal and factual controversy in the present case which would require adjudication by the court for the reasons a four recorded ia 4539 of 97 is allowed the applicant is granted unconditional leave to contest the suit on merit